Is it finally time that BYU jumps Iowa State in the power rankings for number one in this conference? That deserves a deep breakdown. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from America's number one Big 12 podcast, Locked On Big 12. Thank you for making this show your first listen every single day. Off the top, one through 16, I will give you the Big 12 power rankings this week. Is there a new number one in this conference? We need to talk about it. Middle segment. The Big 12 playoff picture is becoming more clear, and it's a good thing. A lot stayed in place and even improved this week. And then finally, the AP poll will once again be fired into the sun. I just need to rant about how Notre Dame has once again somehow jumped teams that are undefeated. If you hit subscribe, I get to keep my job. One, rent is high. Two, I really like buying Chick-fil-A. Three, I like my job. Our power rankings this week, the number one team in the Big 12. We'll start you there. The Iowa State Cyclones. BYU sits a two for me still. BYU won this week. Yeah. Iowa State didn't. Sure. I don't think. Iowa State's been number one for me the entire season, pretty much. I do not think they can sit at home on their couch and be somehow penalized for a bye week. BYU won. Yes. BYU one-handedly against a UCF team that Iowa State struggled with. Also, yes. But... Baylor one-handedly against Oklahoma State, who BYU struggled with. Uh Uh-oh. When we start playing transit property, I'd beat them by more. When we start talking about BYU, some of these closer games that BYU has played, whether that be Baylor or Oklahoma State, we those semantics are going to get you in trouble. You're going to start to look at it and go, well, this guy blew them out, that guy blew them. No. Well, what tells the full story then is the analytics based on EPA, BYU's offense is 18th running the football, 35th throwing the football. Iowa State's offense, 13th running the football, 26th throwing the football. That's better. And a lot of these rankings have been based on EPA for me this season. Should BYU be number one? You can make a very compelling case. Is BYU the best football team in the Big 12? I'm not going to tell you no. Is Iowa State the best football team in the Big 12? I'm not going to tell you no. Guess what? They both won. Every game they played, if you want to tie them at one and two, or I guess you can't tie and one be there and the other. Bit. If you want them to tie at one, that's completely fine. I, I get it. You can argue a case for both of these schools. An efficiency standpoint, I just gave you the offensive stats about defensively. Is BYU, of course, they're better defensively, right? Iowa State's defense, 23rd against the run, fourth against the pass nationally. BYU's defense, 18th against the run, sixth against the pass. So Iowa State wins in three out of the four categories, efficiency-wise, EPA-wise. Like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good at having Iowa State at one still. They're coming off of a bye. They didn't lose. BYU won, yes, on the road against UCF, the same team Iowa State struggled with. But BYU struggled, too. We've all done the same thing at the end of the day. That's win football games. Win every football game ahead of you. I'm going Iowa State won, BYU two, And I... Like nationally, they're both top 10 teams. I don't, I don't know why Iowa State got penalized for having a bye week. Should we just stop having bye weeks? Should bye weeks just not exist? Because those are going to be bad for you. The national media is going to forget about you. It's silly. I mean, Iowa State won BYU too, and I think they're both dominant. I think it's okay. <laughs> That's fine. They're on a crash course to meet in the Big 12 championship game. We'll figure it out there. Kansas State is at three for me. Yeah, they, they, they're a good football team. This week didn't look very good. This week wasn't very fun. Took a little miracle there at the end. A little strip and then bam, Chris Tennant, 51 yarder to win it. But guess what? What was that word that I used with a W there? Win. They did. If it's, I don't care if it's ugly. I don't care if it's ugly. I'm going to make a case later that a lot of times it just doesn't even matter who you play. It's just about winning the football game. Three Kansas State. They're good. Four Colorado. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like this is a top 25 team now. You want to talk about a, a school that we all got to turn our eyes to and say, yep, mm-hmm, nope, they're legit. They're, they're going to be a force the rest of the way in the Big 12 and still have a shot at the Big 12 championship game. That's the case for Colorado. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't expect this. And here they are proving a lot of people, myself included, wrong. I'm going to go five Cincinnati. What? They lost. Yeah, oh, okay. 
Do we put Arizona State above them? Nope. Arizona State lost to them. Do we put TCU above them? No. Baylor? Uh uh-uh. uh. West Virginia? Mm-mm, no. Cincinnati's five. They're still a very good football team. I like the Bearcats. They would scare me if I played them tomorrow and I'm anybody in this conference. At six, Arizona State. They lost to Cincinnati. I think it's a very good Cincinnati team. Also, I should I should note, by the way, going back to that BYU thing, they beat UCF. Had they beaten Colorado, they would move to first. Just a little caveat there. They beat the 16th ranked team in the, in the Big 12 UCF. Uh, six, Arizona State. Seven, TCU. Can throw the heck out of the football. They won. They found a way to win. They found a way to come back and win against Texas Tech this week. They are a team. So really for me, I think five and six, Cincinnati and Arizona State are both pretty solid football teams. Very sturdy defenses, too. Analytically, they're pretty good. Seven TCU, eight West Virginia, nine Baylor, ten Texas Tech. That's that's a pot of four teams where I don't want to play them any given week because it feels like they can turn it on. They can be good. They're inconsistent, no doubt. I think they're better. That's a, that's a group of four right there that's better than the rest of the way and what I'm going to give you. So I would say that's kind of your land of, hmm, I, li- I like you. You exist as a good football team and could beat someone. I, I, think you could be, I think you could be the label of good every now and then. And I'm okay with you. You're probably all bowl teams. Somehow TCU is a bowl team. You got them at seven, West Virginia at eight. Nico Mark, y'all, baby. Trust it. Trust that climb. Nine, Baylor, they continue to climb. Baylor, you could argue Baylor at eight over West Virginia. Baylor just beat a team that has no wins in the Big 12, though. So, again, we have to kind of wait. Our, oh, well, Baylor won by a lot. Oh, BYU won by a lot. Yeah. Look at the opponent where they're ranked in the Big 12 power rankings. We can't give too much, too much glory yet. They didn't beat a top-end team in the Big 12 conference. Baylor has, has yet to do that. Their, their day may come, though, this week against TC. It's number seven versus number nine matchup. At 10, Texas Tech. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, what are you going to put Kansas above them? No. Arizona? No. Houston? Mm-mm. They're still at 10, and I still think they can be good. The sky's not falling completely yet for Texas Tech, though I don't think Texas Tech fans want to hear that necessarily. 11, Kansas. What are you doing here? Where did you come from? And <clears throat> you lost, but you look good doing it. So the 11, which is respectable. Arizona at 12. You have Noah Pafita and Ted McMillan, and we just just crapped all over ourselves this season. Why? Speaking of crapping all over ourselves, that that's what I thought Houston would do the entirety of 2024. But nope. TCU and Utah wanted to make those Cougars look good. They're 13 in the Big 12 power rankings. I thought they would stay at 16 the entire season. 1 and 11. Nope. They beat Utah. That is stunningly bad for Utah. Houston's in a complete rebuild with a new head coach and they beat Utah. Those words don't make sense in my brain. Utah sits at 14. Technically, Utah hasn't lost to a Big 12 team yet, right? Because TCU is a is a Mountain West team and Houston's an AAC team and Arizona and Arizona State are both Pac-12 teams. So, hmm, good for Utah. They're at 14 and they stink. 15 Oklahoma State. Oof. You got drubbed, drubbed. Ali Gordon got, I mean, he was limited enough. Your passing game was, was there in a short route. Make Brennan Presley go work. You just, I don't even know why I'm just for 15. You brought 20 guys back, 20 guys back and you're bad. 16 UCF. They're the worst team in the big 12 right now. They can't seem to really figure anything out. BYU dominated them this week and it rocked for BYU. One Iowa State, two BYU, three Kansas State, four Colorado, five Cincinnati, six Arizona State, seven TCU, eight West Virginia, nine Baylor, 10 Texas Tech, 11 Kansas, 12 Arizona, 13 Houston, 14 Utah, 15 Oklahoma State, 16 UCF. Those are the Locked On Big 12 power rankings this week. Coming up, what is our playoff picture? On Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. I went to FanDuel this week. said, FanDuel, I think the Baylor Bears are actually going to finally do it. My alma mater is going to win a football game. Can I put some money on you, please? Can I give you this money and you'll turn it into more money when they do? And FanDuel said, yes. Yes, that's what we do. It's America's number one sports book. And right now, you can bet $5 to get $150 in bonus bets if you win. A FanDuel sports book is 
gives you everything you need to place live bets on NFL and college football all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can just check out the latest stats, check out play by play, and then place a bet. Visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. And if you win your first $5 bet, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Visit FanDuel.com and do it today. The Big 12's college football playoff picture is becoming a little bit more clear. Now, our first college football playoff ranking is not out yet. And if today we were to seed the college football playoff based solely off the AP poll, which I'm going to go, I'm going to go more in depth later about the AP poll and how horrendous it is. So thank God we're not seeding the college football playoff based on the AP poll. But if we did, BYU would be the fourth ranked team in the country. They would be behind Oregon, Georgia, Miami, who would also be in this scenario conference champions of a power five conference. And then BYU would be the fourth team in that mix as the champion of the Big 12. And it looks like right now, all things point to BYU, who's the highest rated team in this conference in the AP poll, being the Big 12 champion. From there, we have an outside shot at sneak. And I, I know, oh, here he goes again on this whole three, four team. You know, oh, what if we can like... At the very least, within spitting distance, with Iowa State sitting at 12, where they are right now, and they're not getting a lot of national respect, with BYU sitting at nine right now, and honestly, they're not getting enough national respect, with Kansas State at 17, I am begging you, I'm imploring you to see the way that this could shake out down the stretch based on how the schedule of the Big 12 favors the college football playoff glory of this conference. Let's go to Colorado first. They have Texas Tech, Utah, Kansas, Oklahoma State. All four winnable. You know what? The best part of that whole thing is they don't play Kansas State. They don't play BYU. And they do not play Iowa State moving forward. That's all good and well. They finish 10-2. and two. They're a national brand enough that you start thinking, could Colorado sneak into 11 if they're facing against if they're facing another 10 and 2 SEC team, a 10 and 2 Big Ten team, there will be bu- we're going to start talking bubble watch and Colorado will be on it and they don't play any of the juggernauts moving forward. We could feasibly have Colorado go 10 and 2 in the regular season and be even if they don't go to the Big 12 championship, be talking about the Buffs as a college football playoff outsider. There's also this is beautiful. There is also a crash course right now to Iowa State and Kansas State playing later this season. That could further our Big 12 playoff agenda. But before I even get there, let's go to BYU's remaining schedule at Utah. By the way, I will be there. I have been offered a free ticket, which was a very sweet, nice thing. I will divulge more on that later, but I've decided to buy flights and go see the Holy War between BYU and Utah, where Utah could do the funniest thing ever. The great, like their season at this point hinges on just one thing. Their season ends after November 9th. Utah does not care past that about anything. They only want to beat BYU. BYU should be favored. Who knows what Vegas will do? Vegas doesn't like the Cougars. Vegas doesn't like Big 12 teams that are actually good at football, I guess. Oh, yeah, they had a real hunch there. And now BYU gets a bye week going into Utah. After that, Kansas at home. BYU, while they did get thrashed by Kansas last year, has proven this season is completely different. This season is completely different. You've got winnable games, games in which you'll be favored. Kansas, Arizona State, Houston. Maybe you won't against Arizona State. That'd be a very tight line. Those four, guess what? You've already gotten your Kansas State out of the way. You get to avoid Iowa State. You get to avoid Colorado. The top teams, the top ranked teams in the Big 12, aren't there for BYU. So if they go 4-0, if Colorado goes 4-0, we are putting ourselves in a very good spot nationally in the college football playoff picture. And I know what you're probably what you're maybe still thinking is like, I can't, I can't believe this dude. They gave him a, a microphone and he's going to keep saying Colorado over and over as a playoff contender. I am. They have a Heisman caliber quarterback. They have the Heisman trophy winner on their team. And while their offensive line isn't great, they're improving. Their defense is improving. And they're a big story. Deion Sanders is a big story. ESPN would love to sink its teeth into that school getting into the college football playoff. 
Then there's Iowa State. Their schedule moving forward. Love what they have the next three weeks. The game of Kansas, they got a the Texas Tech game is yes, you 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 should win that game. The game at Kansas, still not worried about. Cincinnati at home. This is a tougher schedule than what BYU has. Cincinnati's good. We've seen Texas Tech be good. Kansas was the preseason Big 12 champion, though obviously now they're bad. Then Iowa State goes to Utah, and that should be a decimation. Like analytically, a decimation when those two square off. Then Kansas State at home. Those next four, Iowa State 7-0, and those next four crucial games you avoid, <clears throat> Colorado, BYU, Kansas State. You can keep winning. Then that fifth game is where you get it. I'm going to get there in a second. Because now I want to bounce to Kansas State, who has Houston on the road this week, and maybe that's a tough game now. Kansas State has won four straight, dating back to that BYU loss. They are a one-loss team. They're a seven, They're a top 15 caliber team in the country right now. At Houston, then home against Arizona State, home against Cincinnati. Those are two top-end Big 12 teams. Houston's playing better, but you'll still be favored in all three. Kansas State will still likely win all three. And what is that set up? Paint it with me in your brain right now. Undefeated 12-0 BYU. That is, you've solidified your spot in the college football playoff. You don't have to win the Big 12. If BYU goes 12-1, you are in the college football playoff. Period. I don't want the, well, they'll find a way to leave us out. They won't. I can assure you they they can't. They can't leave 12-1 out. And at that point, Iowa State 11 and 0. Kansas State 10 and 1. Those two teams squaring off in the Big 12 champ or the, well, in the play in for the Big 12 championship game. If at that point Kansas State beats Iowa State, both those teams finish at 11 and 1. Okay, you you're working with me here. Both those teams are 11 and 1. Kansas State goes to the Big 12 championship. Now the committee is going to have to decide to leave 11 and 1 Iowa State out who at 11 and one will by then be solidified in the top 10, be in the conversation of the top 10, be around that nine, 10 range. They've got 11 wins in the regular season. That's one off of the most you can have. And Kansas state would too. You're looking at number five, BYU, number seven, Kansas state, number nine, Iowa state going into the big 12 championship. That is three teams in the college football playoff conversation. That is how the Big 12 is positioning positioning itself in the college football playoff conversation. And then Colorado is at 13, outside looking in, but right there. And then if you really want to talk semantics, that's where you have Iowa State at 11-1, hope to get in. Kansas State win the Big 12 championship. They get in, no doubt. And then BYU at 12-1, also in. Three schools. If we have three schools, at least in that area, at the end of this year, that'd be huge for us. And it's possible. That's what our playoff picture looks like. It is. And I, I, put, I pitched that to you like two, three weeks ago. And it's still there. It's still happening. Believe it. Coming up, the AP poll will be fired into the sun. I, it makes me want to pull my hair out every time. On Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show. Oh, yeah. It's brought to you by Game Time. I um I live in Savannah, Georgia now. And we have a, a a minor league hockey team, the Savannah Ghost Pirates. And boy did I have no idea I would love minor league hockey as much as I do. I go to game time and I have curated deals, super deals, seat views, lowest price guaranteed, all of the good bells and whistles. Click a little button that has the all in price and can toggle it and it shows the total up front and then I see, "Oh, wait a second. Savannah Ghost Pirates minor league hockey." Wednesday night, free beer night, $12. Oh, you tell me I get to go to free beer night for 12 bucks because game time is going to foot that bill. Yeah, they are. You know why? Because download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Oh, but Drake, you said the ticket was $12. That's an $8 discrepancy. That means the ticket's free. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it, buddy? It's game time. BYU is a top 10 team in the country. Number nine. But blow, blow, blow my mind, you know, eight weeks ago. Blows everybody's mind eight weeks ago. Iowa State is a top 10 team in the country, right? 
Oh, wait. Oh, no. Hold up. How about how I'm misreading this? Iowa State had a bye week. Wait a second. Hold on. BYU's behind Notre Dame. What's going? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Iowa State's behind Clemson and AM and Notre Dame. And I go, well, in Tennessee and what? Ha- oh, it, that's how bad the AP poll is. Let's just, I know we keep doing this, playing this game, but I pose the question. Should we have lost to Northern Illinois if BYU had lost at home to Northern Illinois or Iowa State had lost at home to Northern Illinois? Would the AP poll voters be like, you know what? You're right. We should rank them high. What a rite of passage. Well done, soldier. Uh, Should we have lost on the road to a bad in-conference team like Tennessee did against Arkansas? Should we have lost to Georgia 31-3? Does it not matter that Iowa State went on the road and beat a then-ranked Iowa school? Does it not matter that BYU went on the road and beat an SMU school that's tearing up the ACC now? I just, I want to stop. I want to stop playing any relevant game and just start playing Northern Illinois every week and know that if we lose, at least we'll be promoted in the realm of college football. One loss, Kansas State. Behind two loss, LSU. What? Behind two loss, Alabama, who they're leaving in there. They let them hover at 14. Don't count out that Crimson Tide. You never really know if they could find their way somehow right back into that college football playoff conversation. Now, you know what I'm saying right there? Yeah. We're really going to tee them up. What? I, I think the craziest one. It shows I can read every week AP poll voters and where they put their schools. And it's always just a stunning deal. Uh, like John Wilner. John Wilner has BYU behind Alabama, two loss Alabama. Those somehow did put them above Notre Dame. Thank you very much, John Wilner. He has Tennessee at five in the country. There's some wild stuff going on with his. And at the same time, it's somehow not even my least favorite one. There is a man who is like a college football high. I don't think the AP poll voters watch college football. This guy's a, a Proclaimed college football writer, Mason Young, who ranked Navy this week in his AP poll at 21. Did he get sick? Did he forget to watch football? Did he not get his ballot in? Can we not count it then? We have a responsibility as a guy who can fill out an AP poll vote to at least do something normal with it. Navy, who just got waxed terribly in the only game they played against a legitimate opponent. Waxed. And he put them at 21. And he left Kansas State out altogether. What? What? In in any realm, does that make any sense? To rank Navy at 21 and then not put Kansas State in at all. You can't justify that. Then he put two loss Alabama over undefeated Iowa State and ranked Notre Dame, who, again, lost to Northern Illinois over BYU. I'm just begging for any semblance of attention. Any semblance that you paid attention to what happened in college football. Clemson lost, got killed by Georgia. If BYU was seven and one or Iowa State was seven and one and they had lost to Northern Illinois, they had lost to Georgia, they, they would be punted into the stratosphere a la Colorado, who barely snuck into the AP poll in the low 20s this week. But wait, it, shouldn't that be the same for the Notre Dame team that lost to Northern Illinois, for the Clemson team that got beat 34-3 to against Georgia? How do you get bonus points for doing that? Someone make that make sense. Barstool Big 12, friend of the program, posts, Kansas State won a football game and dropped in the rankings. Iowa State was on a bye. They didn't even play. They can't help that. Everyone puts their bye pants on one leg at a time the exact same way across the country. Everyone has byes. Iowa State was on a bye and dropped in the rankings. BYU is 8-0 and ranked behind a team that lost at home to Northern Illinois. The bias against the Big 12 is so blatant, and they're not even trying to hide it anymore. They're not. Sunday was trash day. And that just means that the AP poll came out. Guess who BYU, BYU got killed this season? They've only lost a couple of games to nobody. The damn shame that Iowa State has also lost to them too. Iowa State didn't even score against nobody. 
lost hard. And, and somehow schools that have multiple losses get to benefit over our teams that have won every game placed in front of them. That doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't, it, it may be to you, it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter. And I, I'm continuing to make this case. The more that, that little number is beside your team, the better the Big 12 benefits. And having Colorado here is awesome too. I just, let's throw that in there. Colorado moving to this point, Colorado has been only talked about for Deion Sanders. Oh, cool. Colorado's they're, they're Maybe they're good. Maybe they're fraudulent, but no matter what Deion's a storyline, they're a one loss big 12 team that loss earlier this year came on the road at Nebraska. And while that doesn't look near as good now that one big 12 loss, which was so tight, very competitive against Kansas state does look good. They dropped Arizona. They beat a higher end big 12 team in Cincinnati. And then moving forward, they don't play another ranked team. They can finish 10-2. and two, And if they're finally getting respect, they will move up rapidly in the AP poll because we've learned the AP poll is mostly voted on it by brand. Who's got the bigger brand? Like Ohio State barely snuck past a pretty putrid Nebraska. Like Nebraska looks very bad right now. Notre Dame beat a Navy team that was ranked 24 this week. And then some guy after Navy got beat 51-14 was like, you know what? Rank them. At 21, you know, like BYU goes on the road and dominates at least an in-conference team. LSU gets beat. The, the break speed off them at the end of this game, 38-23. Nope. Still got to have them above Kansas State. Texas barely sneaks past Vanderbilt. Missouri is still ranked. Their combined score against ranked opponents is like 70 to 5. They're getting killed when they play legitimate teams. When our schools play top 25 schools in or out of conference and we win, we are somehow punished for winning or punished for not having a game. That is, uh, yeah, that's not very fun this week. I don't, um, I don't know. I don't know. Hi. Um, yeah. The AP poll voters want to disqualify a team or hurt a team because they had a bye week. I don't. That's why I had BYU still behind Iowa State. The metrics would say that's okay. And I'm, I, if I agree with the computer, the little numbers on my screen right now, happy. I'm good. They have gotten me really far this season. Like the Big 12 best bets have flown. Those have taken off because of those metrics. But I guess I'm the only one. I'm the only talking head that ever pays attention to them. Uh, coming up tomorrow... Let's talk with JT Wister still of Locked On Utes and spank him. I can't. Can I say that? Don't show my bosses. I don't know if they would like that. I won't spank him. That would be weird. But let's talk to him about how bad his team is. This has been and always will be Locked On. Thanks for making it your first lesson every single day. Dose Grande.